I have a question about that, um, Bruce. I have come across some people who have a really positive belief system and who do not expect results in a certain way, but things are not working out for them. How does biology of belief apply in those situations where... Okay, uh, here, a positive belief by definition comes from the conscious mind because that's a creative belief. Mm -hmm. I say, fine. I have all these positive beliefs. Every time I think about it, I go, yep, I got this positive belief. I say, you're even thinking about a positive belief? I say, why is it relevant? Because the moment you're even thinking about a positive belief, you're not even, your control is now from your subconscious, which has the old belief. I go, what's the point? The most we're very conscious of a positive belief, how many, what percent of your day will be positive? And I say, 5%. I said, that's not enough, 5%, because 95% of the day, the subconscious is going to keep running. I don't care what your positive beliefs are. So all of a sudden you realize positive beliefs only work when the subconscious agrees with the positive belief. But if you're having trouble and the subconscious doesn't agree with it, and I'm thinking consciously positive belief, and yet 95% of the day I'm playing the program negative, then my positive beliefs don't add up and they don't work. So positive beliefs work when you believe in the positive belief. So placebo. How does the placebo work? That's a positive belief. What is it? I'm sick. The doctor says this is the pill that is going to heal you. It's the newest, most new technology. It's perfect. You're going to. And I say, how does it work? I say, if you believe the doctor, which most people, that's a program because the doctor's professional and, and we're not. So when, when we're kids, we learn that the doctor knows about your health and you don't. <laughs> that's what we learn. So as we grow up and the doctor says, this is the pill that's going to heal you. And you believe the doctor because that's the program. You take the pill, you get well. And then you find out it was a sugar pill. So I say, then what the heck healed you? Not the sugar pill. You believe the doctor, and the doctor said this will make you well. So I'm leaving and well even before I took the pill. I say, the pill didn't do it. It was the belief that made you well, called placebo. Okay? And, and then, of course, the most important thing for the average person is, yeah, a positive belief can create healing, magic, wonder. It can create heaven on earth, positive belief. But what about negative belief? I go, ooh. Negative belief is equally powerful, but it works in the opposite direction. A positive placebo can cure you of any disease. And it's called nocebo, meaning negative thought. A negative thought can cause any disease. You can get cancer from a, a thought, not from a gene. Uh, and this is uh, the basis of the new biology. This is the basis of the new physics. Both of them agree your thoughts are creating, in biology, it's creating the genetic activity of your body to match your thought. In physics, the thought is creating the entire world that you're experiencing. Both of them say the same thing. And I go, why is this important? Because it's not a suggestion. It's a fact of science. And so all of a sudden, if you look at it, you go, that's nice. I go, yeah, but that didn't change your behavior, did it? That's like, Reading a self-help book, as I said, you could read a self-help book mm -hmm. and you'll know all the right things to do. I can give you a test and say, did you understand what was in the book? And you take the test, you get 100. And I go, great. I say, now that you read the book, did your life change? You know, well, not really. I say, I'm smarter about these things, but my life is still the same. And I go, this is the most critical insight. The conscious mind can learn very easily. The subconscious mind doesn't learn that easily. So I could read the self-help book and my conscious mind understood everything in the book. My conscious mind could pass the test and all that. And I said, so what did my subconscious get? I said, didn't get anything. That's not how it learns. Reading a book is not how subconscious learns. I said, oh, I can educate my conscious mind separate from my subconscious mind. I go, that's the problem. We do. We get very smart. This, oh, wow, how to create the happy, healthful, wonderful life. I got all the ideas. I go, are, are you living it? Well, not really. I go, because you never translated the knowledge of conscious mind into the learning of the subconscious mind. And therefore, the subconscious mind will continue to have the same programs until you learn how to rewrite it. And there's a mechanism. And that's where the problem is. We didn't understand. You have to do something special to get the subconscious to learn.
And so just becoming aware of, oh my God, these are the great rules of life. My life is still exactly the same. Why? Because my conscious mind did not translate that into my subconscious program. So basically then the issue is, well, oh, now the secret is, well, how do I rewrite the subconscious? And then all of a sudden the answers to life are right here. Uh, and the answers to life are simply this. The first seven years of a child's life, you learn because the brain is in theta, which is a lower vibration than consciousness. And I'm talking about reading your brain. I can do on your head called ethograph, so I could read the brain. Okay. Um, the vibration of consciousness is higher. Theta is lower than consciousness, but it is hypnosis. And in a child's brain in seven years is primarily in theta. So they're just being, they're in a state of hypnosis every moment. It's whatever they say, download, download. And so uh, the programs come in. If you want to change the program, then hypnosis is a way to change the program. <laughs> That's how it learns. And so very quick insight is that, um, what, you know, how do, can I do hypnosis? Do I have to see a hypnotherapist? And I go, no, this is even much more easy at home. And it's this way. The vibrations are different levels. The lowest vibration when you put wires on a person's head, EEG, is called delta. That's sleeping. Theta is subconscious programming. The next higher vibration is called alpha. That's called calm consciousness. And there's a higher vibration called beta, which is like schoolroom focused work consciousness. A child starts off delta and then learns theta and then becomes alpha over time, then becomes beta. But an adult has all of them. So all of us now, we, we have all activity ranges. Here's the point. At work, you're in beta, high energy consciousness. You go home, you start to relax, consciousness calms down, that's alpha, calm consciousness. But at the moment you fall asleep, consciousness, falling asleep means disconnect consciousness. The moment you're falling asleep, alpha stops, and now you're in theta. Ah, that's the subconscious one. So it basically says, you just went to sleep, why consciousness is gone, it's not here right now, it disappeared. And yet your brain is now operating in subconscious, meaning anything coming in is not going into the conscious mind, but it's going deeper into the subconscious. So you want to change a program, you put earphones on at night. And as you go to bed, the moment your conscious mind disconnects, whatever's playing on the program is going straight into subconscious hypnosis. So they have uh, these self-help programs that you can get that will, you know, let's say you want more health, you want more love, you want more money. They have programs that you can put on the earphones at night, go to bed, and repeat this for a number of nights. And guess what? You've got the program and you were sleeping through the entire thing. And once the program is in, it's in there for the rest of your life. You don't have to even work on it. And it will do it automatically because whatever that program is, it's subconscious and it works 95% of the day. So instead of having a negative program, what if I put a positive, a positive one? I go, that'll work 95% of the day without you even working on it. So hypnosis is a way of changing a program, putting a new one in. After age seven, the brain is now operating all these different frequency levels, so uh, it's not in theta very much. I said, well, how does the subconscious learn? Because it learns new programs. You learn how to ride a bicycle. You learn how to drive a car. Do the time tape past. Uh, we learn all these things. Okay, and I say, oh, but I'm older than seven. How did I learn it? It's not hypnosis. I go, no. After age seven, repetition, making a habit repeating something. How long did it take you to drive? Well, you had to get in a car. You had to practice how to drive. Practicing creates a repetition, which creates a program. So driving your car now, after you've done it for a few years, doesn't even require thinking. The subconscious knows how to drive the car. You programmed it how to do it. So, uh, uh, so after age seven, you can put new programs in, but you have to use a process called repetition. Okay. And then lastly, there's a new energy psychology, meaning there's a psychology that can program with energy very quickly. Uh, on my website, just to help people real quickly, 
BruceLipton.com. I have about 25 different energy psychology modalities listed with their websites. So you can identify these energy psychology modalities and say, well, what's useful about them? And here's what it is. They engage in the brain a process called super learning. Super learning is like the child. Think about it this way. A child in a family, there's three languages being spoken at the same time in this family. That three-year-old child is going to get all three languages and learn them virtually instantaneously. Okay? I say, wait, take the same child, now it's 10 years old. I say, try and teach it one language. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, it's difficult to learn one language. I say, it's three. It learned three languages. At 10, it's a problem learning one. I go, ah, before age seven, the brain was more super learning. It just had to experience it once and boom, it's going down in like this. If you engage that, process, then you can download new behavior just as fast as that kid. Mm -hmm. Well, energy psychology modalities are those things. So that means you could have a belief in your life that's sabotaging you your whole life. And I say in 10 minutes, using energy psychology, you can rewrite the belief. So this is the way out of the future, okay? Now, the, the issue is, last thing, so I say, you, you can rewrite your beliefs, but now your most important question at this moment is, so what are my beliefs? What are they? I got them when I was zero. I got them when I was one. I even got them before I was born. I have no idea what the heck these beliefs are. And I go, here's the fun answer, the fun answer. 95% of our life is coming from the subconscious programs. So our life is like a printout of these behaviors. I say, oh, to understand your program, just look at your life. And here's a simple point. Those things that you like, that come into your life, and they're there and they come to you, they come there because you have a program that ignores But here's the thing. Anything that you seek in life and you have to work at it, struggle over, put effort into, sweat over, anything, I'm, I'm trying to get this. And I say, well, how are you going? I'm working real hard. I go, why are you working hard? And the answer is cool. Because inevitably that means the program that's built in does not support that. And you are not fighting the universe to get your success. You're fighting your own negative behavior working 95% of the day that says that's not part of my reality. And you want it to be because conscious mind's creative. It can have any reality. And subconscious says, no, only reality I know is what the program is. And that reality that you want doesn't match the program. And therefore you're going to struggle. So the beautiful part for people simply is, what are your programs? Look at your life. What do you want that you seem to have trouble getting? Significance is inevitably that just means you have a program that doesn't support that and they're going to struggle until forever. And I say, yeah, but if you rewrite the program, there's no struggle and it will do it automatically. And all of a sudden I say, wow, if you could take your wishes and desires from your conscious mind, and turn those wishes and desires into programs in your subconscious mind, and here's the great consequence. You never have to even work on creating those wishes and desires. They will automatically be created because 95% of the day, the subconscious is working on creating them. It's like, oh my God, if I just change that program, the rest of my life is not struggle. No, nope. it will automatically get there. Now you finally say something. <laughs> 